with, you know, the balance between, you know, having a spirited practice and then maybe keeping yeah. things from getting the way they were today. You know, that, that was by far one of the, the most competitive practices since I've been here. And these guys are competing and you go to the edge and they're just learning experiences. Nobody did anything really that dumb, but if you kind of, somebody takes a swing on the air, you throw them out. And they went inside with uh, stall and that's what happens. I got to throw you out of the game, they find you. And if you don't have that emotional control, you won't be here. But I was very encouraged by today. That was, that was probably the most competitive practice we've had since I've been the coach here. The pads, you Absolutely. think? Uh huh. You got a problem. I'd much rather have people you got to pull back than people you got to push. And and this team's the competitive as hell, and it's a fun group to coach. The way you designed the first week of practice, did you design it so that you would hope that that would be the outcome? So they not obviously fights, but the, the competitiveness. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of factors into it. Sure, absolutely, you want that, and it's also about the the makeup of the guys we've brought in here. This team's got a chip on his shoulder. We're ready to we're ready to go out there and improve ourselves. And it, like I said, it's a we're having so much fun working with these guys and these guys the way they work. It, it's it's unbelievable. Looked like left practice. Yeah, you know, good. Uh, Mike, you know, I, I we'll see. It wasn't bad, I guess. But until you get all the imaging, you don't know for sure. But you know, right there, just looking at uh, initially, I, I I don't know. You know, I don't think it was that bad. But we'll see. Are there why the quarterbacks from a ball placement standpoint impeccable today where they're putting the football? Is that something that stuck out to you a little bit of where they're placing the ball? Absolutely. I, I you know, Marcus he's in a good flow right now and, and Desmond he's right there competing with him and, and it's it's fun to watch. And I really do believe that competition and really good competition brings out the best in everybody and, and that's what we've got going on at a lot of spots. You think the competitive nature that you have is also just because you have so many guys competing for certain spots as well. That's why it's really because it's actually competitive. It helps, but it's also the, the, the makeup of the guys out there. It's early, but can you see things in Marcus that you didn't see in 19? Do you see different half oh, facets? Like that. It's just like all of us, right? Uh, I, I hope every, every day I, or every year I get to do this, I'm a better coach. And certainly his experiences, uh, you know, brought him to this place, and he's in a, like I said, he's in a good rhythm. He's in a good flow out there. What did you see from AJ12 so far in camp? He's competing, so he's better. Like I said, he's been challenged more in four days than I thought he was all last year in training camp. And so, uh, it's good for him. Arthur, a lot of camaraderie among the guys. When a defensive guy makes a play, all the DBs are there. When a wide receiver makes a play, they're all there. Is something you talked about, or is that all you know, player, player manifested? You just see it building. It's the way these guys, the habits these guys have, and these guys like each other. And like I said, we, they got a chip on their shoulder, and they, they want to come out here and prove something. And, and uh, been really pleased with the effort out here. Today, since it was extra competitive, was there one or two guys that really stood out to you? There were a lot of guys. How does that competitiveness manifest itself beyond what you know what we see when it kind of boils over? Where do you see it in other places? Just the physicality, or is there something oh, else? Oh, Look at the guys uh, compete up on the highway outside the numbers. You know, you're going one on one, or if you're doing certain coverages, you're going to be one on. What are you doing, Liam? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Uh, you got a cracker? Yeah, he's always got a snack. <laughs> um, so you see it all over the place, Josh. You do it even when you go to the special teams period. Um, we try to compete in everything we're doing. But is, is there a marker besides the physicality? Is there a marker besides? Well, you're not like a full pad yet, but. You know, there's certainly when you're running the football and you're and you're going full speed. It, it, yeah, there's an, it's a physical game inside. You want to play inside at, at really any level. I mean, the line of scrimmage is not for the well-adjusted. That's kind of why I have a soft spot for. Him. Coach, you know, since you know Marcus, you talk about the evolution. Have you noticed anything Thanks. different, maybe in the confidence or personality? I mean, just a prime example. He scoots over here, skies the ball into the crowd right there. Is that? Yeah, it's probably. A more emotion than I've seen from him in a while, and it's probably a little bit of him, it's a little cathartic. Like, 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 a lot of makeup of this guy. He wants to go out there and prove. I mean, he's he's had some big moments in this league. Uh, it's been an interesting journey to this point, but he's a Highland talent, and he's won some big games in this league. You mentioned some of the markets there, and some of the other guys that you brought in. It seems like it's similar. Was there some thought process of wanting to bring in guys that felt like they needed to prove something? I mean, I think all the coaches, we, we got a lot to prove, too. Um, certainly, 
take into account the way some of these people, the guys are wired. That's a fair statement. Oh, go ahead. Um, Coach, what? got the front row. Uh, senior selector shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coach. Um, yeah, ball placement. Uh, like Arch said, was uh, you know he pointed out that was on point. But what's your rule on the quarterbacks pulling the ball down in practice? Uh, I know well, what the old know, rule. You know that was certainly a. We didn't do a good enough job, and some of the running quarterbacks, and we, when they broke contain or we lost contain on the rush, and they got out, and it hurt us, and it hurt us in key moments and some very uh, winnable games. For us, and so it, that I let I let allow it because it's, it's work we need, and I and I get it when you're in a 707. There's no rush, but every once in a while you cover them well enough, you're gonna have to transition when you're playing certain quarterbacks that can scramble, and there, it, you're certainly facing um, more of those. It seems like every year. Watson, I'm driving free agent, playing offensive line, playing tight end in college. Uh, what have you seen from him so far in camp? Anything that uh, stands out? Oh, like, like that rookie group. Peyton. I've been very pleased with the rookie O-line group. Those guys work. Leroy, Shafe, Tyler, um, very pleased. With Elijah Wilkinson the last three days, he's been running for two reps. Is he, I mean, I know there's not pads, but is there, what has he shown to, I guess, get that three days in a row? But, you know, a lot of times uh, there's certain things that he's doing that we, we're pleased with and doing it the way that, you know, we feel it needs to be done. And so uh, I think it's a good thing for Jalen to – See if he can step up. Like I said, competition brings out the best in everybody, and we'll see where it goes. I'm not down on Jalen, but it's more that we're more pleased with what Elijah's doing right now. You have a younger player like Jalen. How do you how do you have that conversation handled versus yeah, maybe if that has been around? Conversations, conversations everything. There's there's nothing I would say ever say up here, or and say uh, you know things we have closed doors. I'll meet with those guys one on one, and I, I try to make. He call me a lot of things, but I'll be honest and upfront, and, and I make sure I meet with those guys if there's anything that we do that they want to know why. Jake is now being kind of the senior guy on this offense. What kind of leadership role has he stepped into? Is it any greater than, it, than it's been previously? I mean, that's good. Very, uh, you know, when you lose guys that have been here for a long time and you're looking, there's always, they, they emerge, and, and it merges in their own way, and certainly Jake leads by example. I mean, he's, he's so damn dependable. Um, Love, you know, the work habits he brings in every day, and, and guys look up to him. Now he's the old guy uh, in the building in, in some ways, but him and Grady are doing a, a, a great job there. And we're getting some leadership from other guys. I, you feel Damian Williams out here. I would say that too. Yeah, and, and that sometimes you're going to get in a few scuffles when stuff starts getting competitive, but. That's what you want. You don't want guys sitting back and being passive. It's football. It's a tough-ass sport. And so you want guys that are going to compete. And get. And what you want is guys that kind of get their burr up a little bit when you get beat. You know, you don't want somebody like, oh, okay, I got beat, and then come back. You want the guy to come back and fight. And that's. I don't want a fist fight, but I just, you want the guys to come back, and that's what you're looking for in competing. Don't take it. Don't – we. You know, we talked about it before and talked about it a little bit last spring and defense especially. We're changing a culture around this day going place, okay? And it's not going to be mediocre. It's not going to be average. It's not going to be in the bottom half of the league like it's been 15 out of the last 20 years. Sick of that crap. we got to take charge. And it ain't going to be anybody else to do it but us, okay? I'm tired of everybody telling us how bad we are. After a while, you start believing it. Just like you tell you, you never tell your children and stuff like, hey, you guys, you don't eat. You get mad at a teacher that says, you know, telling some kid he's stupid, right? You don't ever tell somebody that because pretty soon they start believing it. Guys around here on defense sometimes believe, hey, 15th is okay or whatever. I've been in the top 10 one time out of the last 20 years. That bullshit is over, okay? Sorry, I'm getting fired up today, but I'm tired of this crap. We're going to change the culture of the defense around this freaking place. People have got to start talking about Atlanta defense like they did at Baltimore, like they did at New England. It's going to be the same shit around here. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I swear. How do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, they're, they're dashes. I'm going to be good on the podcast. How do you do that? I mean, how do I do it, Mike? Think about it. Think about it. That's called competing. That's what you do. You get after them. You want other guys to get after other guys, too. It comes, it's a hell of a lot more if it comes from another player than it does from a coach. Coaches are always correcting us. We're just basically negative guys at heart. Okay, but when another player gets on you and says, you ain't doing your job, our standard here is we're, you're one of 11 people. 
you just do your job and the other 10 do their job, usually things are going to work out pretty good. We need players that are taking charge, and they are. That's what I like about this young group is these guys are starting to take charge out there and get after each other a little bit and not accept it. And the only way you're going to do it is compete hard, compete hard. And the other thing you're going to do is when somebody doesn't do it, you take them out and you put somebody else in. It's called competition. Okay? Too many times around here, everything's based on salaries. I'm talking about it here. I'm talking about in the NFL. Based on a guy makes a lot of money. I don't care. Hey, I don't have anything to do with salary cap as a defensive coordinator. All I know is the best 11 guys are going to go out there on the field. And the best 11 guys that are hungry and want to play. And if one of those guys making a lot of money, tough. Get the hell out. I've done it before. Okay, I took a starter out at, New or at Baltimore and put a back up in, and he played the rest of the year. And the starter never got back in. I don't really care. Okay, last year we didn't know. I didn't know a hell of a lot about this team. I know a lot more about it right now. And that's how we're going to play defense around here. Arthur said something yesterday about, you know, talking to the team about the iPhone and all the predictions, the wrong predictions about the iPhone. You guys have made a point to address your team with this stuff as well, to tell them to not listen to that stuff. So did you feel like they were hearing it? Did you feel like those... Yeah, that's been Arthur's message in the team meeting most of the time has been that kind of stuff. And it really it pertains to both sides of the ball, whatever. You can't, you know... All I can say is what I'd like to do is see writers that make predictions. If you're wrong, you get fired like a coach does. Well, how, what, you know, huh? No, no, I don't think laps. Coaches, coaches get fired when all of a sudden you don't win. So why, why should you guys be off the hook if your percentage is less than 50 percent? So, huh? So I think, I think that, that would be what I would really like to see going forward. I would like to see that put in. No, I'm just kidding. No, look, the, bo the bottom line is is that, look, we can't control what everybody else says about us. What you got to do is you got to believe in yourself. I've been there before, okay, not many times with New England and Baltimore and stuff, but I've been there before, and I've seen it. And what you got to do, and, and you know what it does? It takes the right people. You want to really talk about it, you really want the truth, it takes the right players to do it. You got to take guys that won't take it. I will not tolerate this. I won't take it. If you can't, you got to find those players. Those are the kind of guys. There's, there's so many times, and I hate to always kind of give you some past history and stuff, but there's so many times I've never, if, if a coach has to raise his voice to get guys jacked up on defense, we ain't good enough. It ain't about us giving a pep talk. Bill Belichick never gives a pep talk for the game. Nothing. Nothing. And he used to always say, if it takes that before a game to get you ready, I'm going to get you ready during the week. You ought to be ready come Sunday. Okay, he doesn't give pep talks. Saban doesn't give really pep talks. The guys I've worked for. Okay, it's, it's players that got to get ready. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to change a culture, trying to bring players in here that got that kind of attitude. Whether they're the fastest guys or not, I think we're a lot faster than we were a year ago. Whether that's, it's all based on that. It isn't based on that. It's based on being a football player. Okay, we get too caught. Some guys get too caught up in height, weight, speed, vertical, all this kind of stuff, long arms, all that stuff. I had James Harrison in college. Nobody wanted his ass. Why? 5'11", short arms. Pretty good career. What do you think? You know? You know why? Because he was a nasty, tough football player that loved to play. That's what you have. That's what we got to have here, and that's how we change it. You change it with players and attitude. You could see a practice like today when, like in coverage, you see a, a corner riding a receiver to the pylon so he can't make the catch and things like that. Are you noticing more of the competition or the technique, the physicalities to make sure they're not getting sloppy because it is getting a little bit Yeah, the only thing I would say, though, here's what a, a guy told I heard this a long time ago from an offensive coach. And it was down in the red area, and I remember the, the quarterback coach, who I had the utmost respect for, talking to the quarterback about being brave enough to throw it in there, even when it looks like it's covered. Well, to me, I am kind of want the same thing on defense. I'd rather see our guys be over-aggressive right now to the point of actually maybe even get an interference call, not, as long as it's not grabbing. I'd rather see them that than sitting there and playing off and being soft and the guy catching it in front of you all day. I'd rather, we, the only way you're going to make them aggressive is make them aggressive, okay? I remember going into a game one year at Cincinnati back at New England. 
and actually told Rodney Harrison on secondary at New England, I said, I want you guys all over these guys. They had Huth Mazada, Chad, Br you know, they had a hell of a team. Palmer. I said, we are going to go attack these guys. If they double move you, grab them, take the holding penalty, it's five yards. First down, big deal. We were so damn aggressive and played the hell out of them and beat the crap out of them. That's what we're trying to do here, especially in camp. We were not aggressive enough last year. We need to be aggressive in coverage. We got a great corner out of here that can be aggressive, but we need everybody to be that. It does. It's, it's a little similar to Fabian Moreau last year in some, in some ways, but you're bringing, uh, you know, bringing in. The good thing about it is, I think we got a great mixture of vets and secondary in, in back there in the secondary, along with young guys. You got two young safeties, but you got two veteran safeties right behind them, pushing them and telling them and helping them a lot. And then you got corners out there, and then you got Darren and Paul and those guys that are over there fighting with Casey. So. The competitive is good. Mike Ford's really shown up. Great, great to have Isaiah back. I mean, I'm feeling good about those guys. When you see a front, like multiple scuffles out there, for as long as you've been around football, like, do you kind of say, why are you doing this? Or like, are you, you have, like, does that kind of get you energized a little bit? Like, what goes through your head? Because you've been around it's long It's not surprising. But when you get a spirited practice, it's, it's usually inevitable. It's going to happen. Crap, I've seen so many of them, Michael. Here's what I do. I'm 72 years old. I walk the other way. <laughs> My ass has been hit before. I went in there as a young buck trying to break it up and getting knocked out. You know what? You guys have at it. I'm, I'm done. Where did you get hit? Huh? Where did you get hit? Oh, way back when. I got knocked out. The guy went back to punch and got me with the elbow. I was behind him. About lost my teeth. So. Where was that? New England. <laughs> and believe it or not, the guy who was in the fight was Brady. <laughs> it wasn't him that hit me, but it was him. Hey, Coach, I um I gotta go to Canton next week. Um, during the story on Richard uh, Seymour, what were your recollections of him? Uh, you know, playing up front for you guys, and, and he was a he was a monster up there for us. I mean, it, he's kind of the last of the two gap ends. You know, where him and Ty Warren could actually two gap guys and really play both gaps. He's kind of the last of that dying breed. You don't you don't see those guys out there anymore. But surprisingly also how athletic he was for as big as he was. I mean and the other thing was he got his hands up. I mean when he wanted to he, he was a handful. And the good thing was it made guys like Bruski say oh pretty good inside backers too. But it made those guys a lot life a lot easier too because it was hard for them to scoop and get up onto the second level. Guys like that they're they're hard to find anymore. He's a great person, a great person. Do you feel like you've been tested maybe more? I, Arthur was saying, right? you feel like you're getting tested more than maybe you were a year ago, two years ago? You no, know, as a corner, you just, you know, for me, I'm just going out there with the same mindset, challenging myself, uh, playing, play out, you know, holding myself accountable. So every play, I feel like I'm getting tested, even if the ball not coming. Over the course of this offseason, that, that, that you really honed in on or tried to get better at, was there anything technically that, that you focused on? Yeah, always some. Uh, just at the line, always you know, just staying patient, putting hands on. Hey, uh, um, Dean Pease was saying that he wants to change the culture. Y'all got to be aggressive. Um, you know, uh, what 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 are you seeing a ways for you all to change the culture to be a defense that? Uh, you know, people are, you know, don't want to see on Sundays. You know, just doing the little things. It all started in practice and camp right now. Just, you know, building chemistry, building trust, and uh, just going out there dominating, you know, any any period in practice. Just holding each other accountable and uh, making the plays that come our way. And how has that been coming here? Just four days of camp, no pads, but just how do you sense things are coming as uh, the defense is trying to build and come together and so forth? Oh, uh, it's good. You know, second year in the same defense, just just building. You know, a lot of new faces. Uh, like I said, just building chemistry. So we're on the right path. Hey, Jay, I was talking to Casey Hayward yesterday, and he said it took him two full seasons to kind of start to understand opposing personnel. Whether he played against a guy, broke him down on film. Do you feel you're at that spot now? Like you know, whether you studied a guy on film or played against him, you, you're pretty comfortable. With yeah, the that's that's the whole thing to it. Playing fast, just knowing you know what you got going on, what you're going against, uh, you know, personnel-wise, receivers, matchups, just knowing who you're going against and have, being able to have an edge to play faster. Did you feel like you were 
feel like a, you know, coach of DPT is great. They felt like it was one of the most competitive practices they've had since Arthur Smith has been here. You felt like it was one of the most competitive practices Arthur Smith has had since he's been here. Did you feel like this was one of the most competitive practices out there? Yeah, aside the fighting that you probably saw, I'm, <laughs> other than that, you know, practice has been competitive this, these uh, past four days, including today. And, uh, you know, it's just energy. Everybody just ready ready to go. So you like to see that type of stuff, but, but outside the fighting, you know, we can get that together. But just energy is what we need. So that's what we're bringing right now. Do you feel like that was lacking? Like, do you feel like that was lacking maybe in the previous years? No. Uh, what you mean? Competitive this at practice, maybe the belief that you guys weren't uh, going to be great. You know, I was only here, this is my third year, so I don't know what was going on back then, but it's been competitive practices. Um, just something that we just got to keep going. it carry on over, just playing smart, though. So you personally don't like when a scuffle breaks up, like breaks out? Like, you know, you'd rather not see the fighting, or do you kind of like it, just not like this fighting? No, you know, we don't need scuffles between each other. Uh, you know, try to stay away from that, keep everybody healthy, just move forward. But like I said, to get a little chippy out there, bring in energy. So those things can happen in football, but we try to get away from those things. When you see a, when you see a, a scuffle fight, everybody run melee, whatever you want to call it, happen, like what do you do? Do you go in? Do you say, ah, listen, I, these guys are like twice my size, I need to get out of here? Like what? It's, it's practice. It's Falcons versus Falcons. You know, I'm conserving energy. I ain't got time for that. So, you know, let them deal with that. Next play. <laughs> if it break out, you know what I mean, opposing teams or whatever, I may go over there and break it up, you know. But it's Falcon versus Falcons, like, yeah, conserving energy, man. Uh, hey, hey, well, can you speak about uh, Drake Wendell a little bit? What have you seen uh, competing, competing against him these past few days? Yeah, uh, he getting real comfortable, you know. Every day I feel like he getting comfortable. He's starting to, um, you know, get the playbook down and being able to move a little bit different. Uh, you know, more confident in his route running and knowing what he got to do. And, uh, you know, every time we go against each other or whatnot, you know, he just bring that edge that I need, you know, to go against each other, getting ready for game day. So keep that going. It's fresh start of camp. Just keep building with it. You don't necessarily go against Pitts all the time. Sure. Up with him. What is it I, I mean, you've seen him improve on, or what is it that he does that you think makes him – one of the better tight ends, frankly, in the league at this point. Yeah, uh, route running. You know, he getting physical. He filling out his frame for sure. But, you know, he getting his route running down, knowing how to use his body to box out people and knowing his strengths. You know, that's the main thing. Going in practice, just crafting, getting better. Coach Smith said he felt like you'd been tested more in practice already this year than you were all of last year. Does it feel that way to you? You feel like it's more competitive? From your seat. Like I said, like corner, the ball not coming every play. So I'm taking every play as competitive. If I'm shutting down and they don't throw it, that's that's a win. If they throw it, not deflected, that's a win. Like every play is competitive. You feel like more balls coming your way? I, I ain't really paying attention to that. You know, I'm just out there going, you know, playing, just playing. I ain't focused on that. What do you feel is for you the most competitive part of practice? Because there's, you know, there's like the one-on-one Receiver, DB drills, as well. 11 11. Like for you, what do you feel is the most important part? <laughs> Lining up, bro. Anytime I line up, it's competitive. You know, whether the only thing that's not competitive is job through. If it's live, it's competitive. How are the uh, the two younger uh, uh, safeties doing in terms of uh, you know talking to you guys and always being in, in the uh, right spot? How are how, how are uh, those guys doing? Good, you know, confident. You know, when they when they when they do make a call, it's loud. They confident. They are not making mistakes. So that's that's the that's the right path we on. You know, just building trust and chemistry is the big picture. That's what we're trying to get done. Gorgeous day off tomorrow. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, everybody loves the off day. Getting your body right, getting your mind clear, your space. So we'll take advantage of it the right way. <laughs> What do you see as the outlook for the defense this year? How good can you guys be? We can be as good as we, you know what I mean, as we hold ourselves accountable to. Like, like I said, just stacking days out here, getting ready for preseason. All these steps is you know how we get ready for um, all our games this year. But you know, just gotta take it a day at a time. From Drake London, because a lot of guys we've talked to are like he's made some great plays. What have you just been saying? 
Yeah, yeah, he has been making, you know, great plays. Um, made a good play today in one-on-ones, and, you know, he'd be making the, the, the short throws, you know, anything, just make, just catching the ball, and, and that's what we need. So um, he looked real good out there, though.